Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity 2D tutorial where we're taking a look at making your own 2D platformer game and learning all the basic skills that you need to make your own awesome game full of awesomeness. So today we're going to take a look at adding uh, a ladder to the game and being able to climb that ladder and all the fun stuff that involves. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add it just into our level 2 that we've made here because we have a nice little platform here that's just the right height above the ground. I think like three blocks equivalent high is a good height for our ladder that we're going to make. Um, so what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to need a, an art uh, version of a ladder. We need a picture of a ladder to be able to climb. So I've updated the sprite sheet we've been using in our game so far. Uh, so if you can, the link will be down below in the description as it has been all along through the series. And there'll be an updated version that now has a ladder in it if you haven't uh, got it recently. Uh, so what you do is grab that file, go to our art folder here, um, we'll open that in Explorer, uh, because you can't drag, if you drag the file straight into here, it'll just create another object here. What we're going to do is replace the one that already exists. So we'll grab the new file, copy that, pop it in here, paste it in, replace the file, and now if we go back in here, and we go to our little file, we go into our sprite editor, and here we have a little ladder, so we'll draw a box around that. And we'll give it one bit of space beside the ladder. So you can see the white line goes to here, but we want to make it one extra on the side there and one extra on the side there, just so it's the exact same size as our other blocks here. Uh, if you want to test it out, a simple way to do that actually is just to grab one of these, pop, pop it there, and then make a new one over this one if you wanted to. But we'll call this uh, our ladder. And we'll apply the changes. And then we'll go back in here. So what we're going to do is drag a ladder in here. And what we're going to do, we're going to make a tree tall. Uh, rather than making a tree separate little ladders, we're going to make a tree tall. For the, for the way that we're going to handle our ladders in the game, we want it to be able to be one object that the player can climb, rather than a series of separate ladders. So what we're going to do is go to our game objects, create an empty one. And we'll create, uh, Just we'll just call this a ladder, I suppose. Um, I'm going to put that just there and then we're going to pop this down I'm going to grab one of the ladders pop it onto the scene there we go and we're going to drag this ladder on top of the other one so that it makes it a child of that one and we're going to set the position of this to be 0 and 0 so we know it's in the exact center of the the upper part the, of the parent object of the ladder and then we're going to duplicate this object so we'll do control and D and with this one, we'll hold control and drag it down one. So there we go. It goes down exactly one space. Uh, and we'll control and D again. And we'll drag it down one more space. So now we've got our ladder that's tree tall. And if we click back on the parent object, we can move him around and lock him into place wherever we want. Let's put, if we do the trick of, let's just put it back here for a second. If we do the trick of holding V to access the corners, we can grab a corner here and we click it right into place and now it's perfectly aligned with everything that we want it to be which is just what we need so what we're going to need to do with our ladder we're going to make this um, a trigger zone that the player can enter and then start climbing much like we've done with the the exits of the level where the player can walk to them and then if they pressed up or whatever they would leave the world and uh, we're going to do the same with the ladder so we're going to make a box collider on the parent object of the ladder so we'll go to our add components, box collider 2D, and we want to make sure we make this a trigger for the player to be able to activate it. Uh, and we need to resize this green box so it's in the center of the ladder here, and it's, we want it to be nice and thin so that the player has to walk a fair way into it, or else the player could walk to, so that just a tiny bit of him is touching the edge of the ladder, and he's not really on it, but he'd still be able to climb up in the air. And that wouldn't really look very good at all. So what we're going to do is grab our size, shrink it down, we'll say shrink it down to 0.1 and then we want we know the height is 3 so we'll make the y value to 3 and you can see it's it's up a little bit too high there so we'll put it to minus 1 I think, yeah there we go, minus 1 and now it's just down to the right height covering our three child ladder objects and that's our ladder, that's basically all we have to do with creating it in the game all that's left is to make it a script and make it run because obviously at the moment it's not going to do anything we haven't done anything special with it 
but we can pass through it make sure it's all okay and jump up and down as you can see actually just looking at it now we can see that the player appears behind the ladder so that's probably something that we don't want we want the player to appear in front of the ladder so what we'll do is if we go to our player and we go to a sprite render we can see his sorting layer is set to default and his order in layer is zero so order in layer determines whether something appears in front of or behind the object and you can have different sorting layers so you could have like a player layer and you could have ladders on the separate layer if you wanted to and put them behind but just for the purposes of keeping everything nice and simple the way we were going to do it is if we just select all our ladder pieces here on our sorting layer we're going to change the order in layer to minus one so now because it's a number less than what the one is on the player if we go back into the game when when the player walks along with the ladder you'll be able to see he walks in front of the ladder and it is a little bit hard to see with the type of player that we have that he's uh he's a fairly see-through guy anyway but if we if we maximize this here might be a bit more obvious you can see the green is in front of the ladder and if you have like nor if you have a more uh, non see true character obviously that's something that you would probably want to happen in the game but anyway currently ladder doesn't do anything so we need to make us we need to make a script for the ladder to be able to tell our player that he can climb climb himself uh, so we'll go to our scripts folder we'll create a new one C sharp script and we'll call this we'll call this ladder zone and we'll open this up in mono develop and then once it's loaded what we're going to do is we're going to just basically use this script to tell the player um, that he's in the ladder zone. So we'll actually open up the player controller script as well. So we're going to make a few changes to that script to be able to climb the ladder. So we go back in here now. So in our player controller we're going to add a boolean variable so that we can decide whether the player is on the ladder or not. So what we're going to do is uh, public bool on ladder. And that will just be true or false whether the player is on the ladder. So in our ladder zone, we're going to create a variable here. I just have a, a private player controller. So that will create an instance of the player controller script. And we're going to call that the player. And then in our start function, we're going to say the player is equal to find object of type. So that'll search through the scene and look for an object that has the player controller script attached when we type in player controller here. So it'll search for the player controller script in the scene and find what we need. And we're not going to use the update function at all, so we'll get rid of that. What we're going to use is, as we've done before, we void on trigger enter 2D collider 2D other. And we make our little curly brackets. And then within this, so this is what the text when the player enters the ladder zone. And we're going to make sure and check if it's the player entered and not some other object that we don't want to worry about. So if other.name is equal to player. So in other words, if the object that enters the zone is the player. If that's true, then what we want to say is the player dot on, uh, on ladder is equal to true and likewise we want to say when the player leaves the zone so when the player is no longer climbing or not climbing but no longer in the the collider box we set up for the ladder so instead of on trigger enter we're going to say on trigger exit 2d and then the player that on ladder we're going to set it to false instead of true so the player that on ladder is equal to false and that's pretty much it for this little script so we'll just save this and convert it if you need to, of course. Um, and we'll save our player controller one as well. And then back in the game here, what we're going to do is just to make sure everything's working as we want it to, we will click on our player and wait for it to finish compiling down here in the corner. And once it's finished compiling, we're going to run the game. And there should be a bit, we should see, we have our variable on ladder here now. And if we hit play. We can check and make sure that it's all working okay so far. So the player walks over. If we watch that box up there, well, nothing's happening. So Well, nothing's happening because I haven't attached a script to the ladder. One of these days, I'll remember to, <laughs> to do this stuff straight away. Ladder zone, there we go. Now if we hit play, now we'll get something happening. <laughs> uh, 
So we walk over here and we click on our player, make sure we have our on ladder variable. So if we walk, click on him again, let's get rid of him. You can see our on ladder is now true, so that means it's reading in the zone perfectly and properly, just what we want it to do. So obviously we want to be able to do something when we go into that zone. Into that zone. So we'll go back to our player controller, and we'll add a few different variables because we want to have we want to be able to control how fast the player climbs, um, and well, that's pretty much what you want to control. But <laughs> uh, so we're going to create a public float to determine its the player's climb speed. And we're also going to do a private float of our cli of climb velocity, which will explain that the use of this now down below in a second. And we'll create another vote uh, public float, uh, or no, not public, sorry, uh, private float gravity store. So this this variable is going to store what gravity is on the player because that's how we're going to determine how the ladder works basically what we're going to do is when the player walks onto the ladder we're going to set gravity is equal to zero so then the player is free to move up and down he if you start climbing the ladder he won't get pulled back down to the ground or anything like that so um if we go into our start function here we're going to say gravity store is equal to my rigid body 2d which is we've just set that to the rigid body of the player here and we, what we want to do is get the the gravity scale that is part of the rigid body so that when the player when the game starts for example on our player here where's our rigid body we have our gravity scale set to five whatever you may have changed that to depending on how you want the players jumping and stuff to feel but um we wanted to grab that that value straight away and store it into this variable so that we're able to like reset the gravity when we need to when we leave the ladder so what we're going to do is scroll down below the rest of the stuff that we have here and we're going to put in our bits of ladder code down here and basically what we're going to do is we'll have two little if statements so if if the player's on the ladder then we'll do a certain bit of code and then if the player is not on ladder then we'll do another little bit of code um, so the basics of what we're going to do is as I said we want to set to set there's no gravity when the player enters onto the ladder so if the player is on the ladder then my my rigid body 2d dot gravity scale is equal to 0 f and then of course when the player leaves that we want to reset the gravity back to what it was so my rigid body 2d dot gravity scale is equal to gravity store and that will do exactly what we want it to do the player will be able to uh, return uh, to the gravity being working properly as soon as they leave the ladder so we'll just test that out here now wait for it to compile down here in the corner and once that finish is gone we'll hit play and the player should be able to walk over the ladder, jump onto it, and then stay in place at the point where he jumped onto the ladder. So if we walk by, everything works perfectly fine. If we jump onto it. Hmm. We may have to just restart it. It might not finish compiling properly when we did that. Just wanna make sure. So the ladder is being activated when we get on it. killing ourselves okay well the gravity is acting slightly strange but that's okay because we're not going to worry too much about that um, once we start using our controls uh, so what we're going to do is for when we're in the when we're exiting the end of the level we're already or sorry no when we're moving side to side we're using our input uh, where is it here now our get access horizontal and that's determined how much we're moving left to right. So what we're going to do is do the almost the exact same thing for moving up and down. So when we're on our ladder and the gravity scale is zero, um, what we're going to do is set our climb velocity is equal to climb speed multiplied by input dot 
get axis raw and instead of horizontal we're going to say the vertical axis and we're going to return that, that statement and then here we're going to say my rigid body 2d dot velocity is equal to new vector 2 and the x will be just the value that it already has so my rigid body 2d dot velocity dot x and a new value for it will be climb speed so now when the player is in this zone basically what it'll say is the velocity of the player is if you're if you're not touching the button the velocity will be zero so you won't move up and down and if you are touching the button the it'll either move you up and down by multiplied by the climb speed or it'll just stay in place if you're not pressing anything basically so we'll save this now we'll go back into the game here And again, once it finishes compiling, we'll need to set our climb speed. Um, so let's set it the same as our move speed, I suppose. So five as well. So we hit play, and if we walk over to our ladder here, and we walk up it. Huh, he's, hmm, well this isn't what I want to be happening. He's automatically climbing the ladder. Okay, we're, we've, we've done something wrong here. Let me just go have a look at the script. Um, Oh, because we set the velocity to climb speed instead of climb velocity, which is what we set here. So climb velocity is what the, is the value we actually want to use because we're multiplying our climb speed by whatever input we have. So we'll go back in the game here now. And hopefully this time it should work just the way we want. Once it's finished compiling again, we'll hit play. And now if we walk over to our ladder and we press up, we climb. If we don't press anything, we just stay there in place. We can hide out for this guy, drop down on him. We can climb up and down, we can kind of bounce up the top a little bit. And there you go. So basically that's the basics of how you can have your own little ladder in your game. You can move up and down between levels. It's a pretty simple way to do it, but it works pretty well. Um, at the moment our, our our projectiles are bouncing off this guy and much like we did with our zones before we want to make sure that doesn't happen so we'll go up to our layers we'll change this to our one of our trigger zones Um no this object only doesn't matter uh, so we make sure we can throw our stars to that but yes that's the basics of making a, a nice little ladder a very simple one why is it still hitting off Did I make the player a ladder? That was a bit silly, wasn't it? <laughs> we'll send him back to being a player. And we'll make the ladder a trigger zone rather than the player. That was a a strange move to make, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> um, but yes, that's the basis of, of adding a ladder to your game. It's nice and simple, not too complicated. Um, and fairly straightforward. So thanks for watching. I will be back with more 2D platformer tutorial goodness um, in the very near future. And I'll see y'all very soon. Thanks for watching this episode, and if you'd like to see just how some of the concepts we've covered can be brought together into a fully fledged game, then head to portalnauts.com and check out the demo for my game that I've been working on for the last while. Uh, it uses a lot of the concepts we've covered so far in the series, as well as other things that we're going to cover in the future. So if you want to get a feel for where we're going and what kind of things you can make with these kind of with the basics of Unity, um, head over there, try out the game for yourself. And let me know what you think of it, of course. And the best place to let me know is to head to Twitter, at GamesPlusJames. Say hi, I'm always there, ready to say hello and do stupid things. But also, if you'd like to see some of the game being worked on and developed in, in real time, head to twitch.tv slash GamesPlusJames, where I regularly stream development of the game, and you can get to see behind the scenes of how things all work. So, head there, say hello, and I'll see you all in the near future.